Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel Civil Engineering Shilo's Updates. Today we are going to learn the basic things every civil engineer must know. Not only the civil engineer but also everyone should consider the following points what I'm going to say in this video. I am here in your ongoing house construction project and let's start learning. And before that if you are new to this channel kindly subscribe my channel and click the bell icon so that you would get my future updates easily. Now let us see about column lapping. As per IS 13920 don't do column lapping where the maximum woman acts. If you do that it may become a weaker section. In column where is the maximum woman acts at top and at the bottom. From the top you have to take us L by 4 and from the bottom you have to take us L by 4. In the middle, the middle of the column is the lapping zone. In that only you have to do the column lapping. See in this column also they have done in the middle of the column. Uh, from this length to this length is called as the lapping length. How to find this lapping length? For column we have to use the formula 50 into D. Where D is the diameter of this rod. If you have used the diameter of rod as 12, then you have to multiply 50 into 12 is equal to 600 mm. For what purpose column lapping is done? Technically, steel rod we used to get from shop is only up to 12 meter length. In that case, when we rise second floor, the length of steel rod is not enough. In that case, lapping is done. For lapping, few conditions we have to follow. What are the few conditions? We should not do lapping at same level. If we do that, it may become a weaker junction. Lapping shall not be done for bars larger than 36 mm. That is for larger diameter bars, it has been welded. The objective of lapping is to transmit load from one bar to another bar, as well as retain continuity. Lapping length varies on basis of tension and compression zones. For example, if your column has 6 numbers of rods, in that case, 3 numbers of rods should cut at some height level and other 3 rods should be cut at some other height level. And also, if a column has 8 numbers of rods, the 4 rods should be cut at some height level and other 4 rods should be cut at some other height level. It should not be in the same height level. Next let us see about column ties or stirrups. The spacing of the stirrup along the column is very important and should ideally be specified by the designer. Stirrups are provided to hold the main reinforcement together in an RCC structure. While concreting it holds the main reinforcement in place. Have you ever noted this point in column? This point in column stirrup is called weaker point. If we arrange weaker point of hall hooks in same level, then it may lead to column buckle. So what we have to do is arrange this hook end of stirrups one after the other so that the column own buckle and gives good strength. As you see in this video, ties or stirrups of column should be arranged like this. In this house construction project, the bricks are laid horizontally as stretches. That is called a stretcher bond or it can be also called as running bond. Stretcher bond is also called as running bond. Here you can see the cement mortar is filled in between these two bricks. The cost of this brick is less when compared to this cement mortar fill in between those bricks. And another one important thing is the thickness of cement mortar in between these bricks should be 10 mm and it should not exceed more than 10 mm. Bricks are the building blocks of any building. If the quality of bricks used in any construction project is poor, it may lead to very serious damages. So before starting any construction project, one must check the quality of bricks before using it in any other construction site. In this house, they are using red clay bricks. But nowadays, in most of the houses, AAC blocks have been used in everywhere. 
Let us see few parts of brick. This is the stretcher portion of the brick. And this is the header portion of the brick. And this portion we call as row lug. And this portion we call as row lug stretcher. Next we have to check the visual inspection. Visual inspection means we have to check the color of the brick. Next we have to check the shape of this brick and also the size of this brick. The color of this brick should be deep red or copper red in color. The shape of the brick should be purely rectangular in shape. And with sharp edges like this you can see in this brick with sharp edges. The size of the brick is 190mm into 90mm into 90mm. That is the length of the brick is 190mm, the width of the brick is 90mm, so the height of the brick is 90mm. Keys in brickwork. In some bricks, as you see in this picture, company names or any other names has been written in the bricks. This shallow impression in bricks gives good bonding strength when we do plastering work. This impression is called keys. Now let's see how to check the quality of the bricks. First we can do a soundness test. How to do the soundness test? Take two bricks. One in each hand. Now these two bricks should be stuck with each other. Like this you have to do. When you do like this, you might hear metallic ringing sound. When you hear this sound, you can hear that this brick is of very good quality. The next test is to check the quality of brick, we have to do the water absorption test. How to do the water absorption test? You have to choose 5 bricks like this randomly. And first you have to take the dry weight of these bricks. Next you have to immerse these 5 bricks in water for a period of about 24 hours. After 24 hours you have to take the wet weight of that bricks. The difference between the final average weight and the initial average weight gives how much the water has been absorbed by these bricks. The water absorption should not exceed 20% of average weight of dry bricks. The next test is hardness test. In hardness test, you have to use your own nail and make a strong impression here. If there is no impression left on this brick, the brick is of very good quality. The next test is structure test. For the structure test, you have to break the brick into two pieces like this. And you have to see all the structure inside the brick. Uh, when you see the section of this brick, the brick is of homogeneous, uniform and also there is no defect left here. Next we can see about the staircase in this house construction project. As you all know that this is called as the thread of the staircase and this is called as the riser of the staircase. In this house construction project, the riser is 150mm and the thread is 250mm and the height of the room is 3000mm. This is called as the flight of a staircase. Now let's see how to calculate this number of steps. How to calculate? We all know that the height of the room is 3000mm and the riser is 150mm. When we divide the height of the room upon this riser, we will get the number of steps. 3000 upon 150 we will get the answer 20 number of steps. So we have to provide 10 number of steps in each flight. This is a dark leg waist slab type staircase. Now we have to find the horizontal length of these steps. How to find the horizontal length of the steps? Number of steps into thread. Number of steps as we all know that 20 number of steps and the thread is 250mm. When we multiply this 20 into 250mm, we will get 5000mm. This 5000mm is the horizontal length. Next we have to find the waist length. This is the waist slab. How to find this waist length? This length we have to find first. We know the height of this room is 3000mm and the horizontal length is 5000mm. According to Pythagorean's theorem, root of 5000 square plus 3000 square will get the answer 5830 mm that is 5830 mm that is the waist length of the staircase. 
we can find waist length in other way also. Uh, we all know that the riser is 150 mm and the thread is 250 mm. Uh, by considering only these two measurements, we can find the waist length of the staircase. Here also the same formula we have to use. Pythagorean theorem that is root of 150 square plus 250 square will get the answer of 291 mm. When we multiply this 291 mm with the number of steps, we will get the answer as 5830 mm. Next we have to find the thickness of waist lap. How to find the thickness? This is the thickness of the waist lap. As per IS code book, the formula is span upon 20. Here the span length is 5000. So 5000 upon 20 we will get the answer as 250 mm. This is the thickness of this waist lap. How to calculate pitch or slope of your stair? Even though we know that the slope of staircase should be between 25 degree to 42 degree, we should calculate the accurate slope degree. For that we have to use the formula tan theta is equal to opposite side upon adjacent side. That is riser upon thread. Riser is 150 and thread is 250. When we divide this we will get the answer 0.6. So tan theta is equal to 0.6. When we use this value in calculator, we get the answer 30 degree. Let us see about pointing in brickwork. The finished profile of motor joint at its external surfacing is known as pointing. Pointing in brickwork can be a very time consuming job. Although it may look easy, it takes a bit of experience to get the professional finish seen on most of the brick walls. Generally, motor is structurally weaker than the bricks or blocks. It's a good practice if we do pointing work simultaneously along with brick work. If we do like that in future while doing plastering work, it creates a good bond between them. I believe that this video helps you a lot, especially for freshers. If you like this video, kindly subscribe my channel, click the bell icon and share this video to your friends. Thank you.